Thanks uh, for introduction. Good morning to all. So this is the first time I'm uh, visiting IMSC. So I got another chance uh, when uh, Professor Rajesh uh, invited me to give a lecture. Uh, that was just before uh, COVID-19 probably. Uh, Professor Rajesh cannot uh, remember that. So what happened? So I applied uh, for a position here. So in uh, uh, end of uh, 2016, so around after two years, Professor Rajesh against the same application invited me, but immediately that this COVID-19 started. By the time I was settled down in IIT Tirupati, but uh, it is very uh, nice to uh, come here. And uh, one of my uh, collaborator from whom I actually learned about this uh, stochastic resetting problem, uh, Dr. Arnopal is also here. So uh, if anything I cannot explain, so I please refer uh, Dr. Arnopal. So today uh, uh, we'll discuss uh, some of our uh, recent developments in our uh, lab and which is related to a very simple 1D drip diffusion uh, process uh, which actually leads to a decision making one and we'll see that uh, in terms of uh, some important uh, uh, quantifier uh, while uh, one decision making process is being considered that whether we can uh, get uh, benefited or whether we can amplify some of the gain during decision making process using a stochastic desetting. So first let me introduce the model uh, the way we will speak is a very simple uh, Tom and Jerry uh, uh, game model. So uh, let us consider uh, Jerry is inside a maze and there are two doors uh, there and uh, this is Tom and this is some cheese. Right now uh, first let us consider there is nothing. So in that particular case uh, the escape of JD from any one of the doors, that escape probability is the same, similar and depending upon the size of this maze, there will be some uh, characteristics time scale at which it will escape. Now the interesting uh, thing happens, if suppose uh, Tom is sitting here and in the other door there is uh, some sort of cheese, then we can consider that if uh, Jerry will obviously always uh, try to escape from uh, Tom, so we can consider there is a wrong decision if uh, JD reaches here. And on the other hand, if Jerry can find a cheese, that will, can be considered as a uh, correct uh, decision. Now what we assume that, so in this model, we can very simple way, we can uh, assume that uh, Jerry can send some sense of some sort of fragments from cheese and also some sound or pheromones from uh, Tom uh, can repel him from here. So we can assume there is some sort of drift towards this uh, right decision. So now if we map this problem in 1D, so we can consider that uh, some particle, Brownian type particles are there and uh, initially and stochastically it is moving and these are the absorbing boundaries, one of them can be considered as a right decision, another can be considered as a uh, wrong decision. Now depending upon the length uh, scale and we will have and the strength of the, the stochasticity, we will have the decision time uh, and that will give the escape rate and that can be any one of these and another will be the escape probability. So either from this uh, window or that window. So depending upon the whether it is epsilon plus or minus, we can say that epsilon plus can be the right uh, decision and we will find that right accuracy. Now as I mentioned that if there is no bias, sorry, uh, if there is no bias in terms of uh, drift not in the special uh, symmetry, so if it is in the right in the middle of the uh, maze, so you can see that the escape probability is 50-50 and there is in, uh, nothing interesting. But in presence of uh, both Tom and Cheese, we can find that there will be the uh, a, a certain drift and um, we can find that the outcome, this epsilon plus will be higher. Uh, physically, we can sense that. Now, if we consider these two things, that one is the decision time, how long it will take to escape and another is the uh, uh, escape probability. So that ratio, uh, in uh, we can define as a reward ratio and clearly it will be the function of the initial position where it was uh, set and the strength of the deep, uh, drift. Now in uh, decision making process, uh, it is very obvious that uh, something happened uh, that uh, how to take decision more accurately or quickly. And obviously common sense is that if we can take accurate decision in a shorter time. So therefore we can uh, define that uh, reward ratio as accuracy over time or in uh, enzymatic kinetics, a very uh, popularly known uh, terminology is used that is uh, speed accuracy spread up or SATO, which is essentially the uh, reward ratio. Okay. So now, on top of that, if we introduce some sort of 
resetting. That means uh, Jerry was there, Tom, uh, that uh, window related to where Tom is sitting is the wrong decision, this is the right decision, and we map this problem in 1D. And here, uh, depending upon the strength of the drift and the initial position, there will be the splitting probability, and we will find some sort of divide ratio. Now, my point is that while uh, JD is randomly moving, if after certain time, if we stochastically reset JD in, in a uh, particular position, initial position, X dot, that need not necessarily to be in the middle of that uh, uh, distance. So then what will happen? Whether using this stochastic resetting, we can amplify or we can optimize that reward ratio, or in other words, we can say that that speed accuracy trade-off. So that is the issue here. So basically, in this uh, context, I want to mention that this problem, uh, although not in the framework of uh, decision-making one, was uh, first uh, introduced uh, by uh, Dr. Ornofal, who is sitting here, and in absence of any sort of drift, and he calculated if there is, uh, within an interval, there are two escape uh, routes, and then uh, using stochastic resetting, uh, how we can find that it can accelerate either the uh, escape time or in some, uh, sometimes the, how it will influence the splitting probability. And what they find that depending upon the uh, uh, breaking of the spatial asymmetry, actually they find that resetting can help the escape time under certain condition and beautifully they have analyzed this. So in our particular problem, what we did, actually we just made one simple alter alteration, we introduced one uh, drift there and we see the outcome, what is happening. So in terms of physics, it is just addition of this P term with respect to Ornov's paper. Okay, and now once we introduce that uh, stochastic resetting, then X naught, V and R, so reward ratio will be a function of all these three things, and what you will find that tuning uh, these three, we can optimize the uh, SATO, so we want to see this role. Fine. Now, uh, as uh, I'm in chemistry department and my training is in physical chemistry, so uh, what is the context in which we consider that? So uh, in enzymatic kinetics, as we all know that uh, there is some uh, beautiful phenomena called kinetic probating, so what happened? when some uh, enzyme is uh, combined with some substrate, there might be two or multiple similar type of substrate in terms of energy or something, and uh, combination of them will give you energy substrate complex, and essentially you will get some product. Now, if we have two similar type of substrate, out of that, suppose one is correct substrate, another is wrong substrate, and when enzyme combine with the correct substrate and give the product, so you will get the correct product, otherwise you will get the wrong product. What happened in nature, it has been found that nature has some beautiful mechanism in many uh, this type of uh, uh, enzymatic kinetics that out of that multiple possibility similar substrate, it always chooses the correct one. And the accuracy in which uh, it uh, goes, it is very high, say for example in some particular DNA replication process, you will find that error is, is extremely low. And not only that, this phenomena happens in terms of uh, very finite time or we can rather say very short time. It is not that it takes very long time to find the accurate substrate. So that is the uh, issue and uh, people, uh, I particularly refer, refer this point. So uh, paper, in this paper, very in simple uh, Michaelis maintain enzymatic kinetics, it has been demonstrated that how, uh, what are the different kinetic scheme you can explain this uh, phenomena which is called kinetic proof reading. And mostly so far what people did that people introduces different uh, number of intermediate states where it can go to and fro, it can go and uh, uh, reach to the product and also the chemical potential bias. What, what you can say that uh, energy profile diagram, the multiple intermediate state and if you break that overall uh, um, uh, uh, energy barrier into multiple states, so you can get uh, some benefit from that and with, uh, with different mechanism, you can find or you can explain the accuracy of this uh, kinetic probating me mechanism. So what was not uh, mm. considered so far, in fact, today we have also not considered uh, till date, that suppose if we uh, keep from any uh, intermediate, suppose this is the nth intermediate from here, either it can go to the forward intermediate or it can come back to the backward in intermediate. On top of that, if we put another window, that it can come back directly to uh, free enzyme and free substrate. So that unbinding process was not considered yet. 
in enzymatic kinetics, uh, 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 kinetic proof reading processes. So that we can map as some sort of resetting and we can uh, explain this problem uh, whether we can again uh, amplify or optimize the speed accuracy trade-off by introducing an appropriate unwinding processes there from any intermediate step. So uh, that we can be considered as a context. However, as I mentioned in today's talk, I will only mention that we will only discuss the physics of the problem in a simple 1D uh, model where uh, we uh, consider this uh, stochastic resetting of the uh, JD's position and from here you can say that the unwinding processes can be mapped as a stochastic re resetting. Okay. So now, very briefly, uh, uh, those uh, who has uh, uh, not uh, introduced to the uh, uh, restart problem. So why that resetting problem is very important nowadays? So uh, again, uh, I will refer uh, or not this paper. There are some beautiful phenomena and example very in a simple way where you can find that in physics, chemistry and finances and even in computer science, there are many phenomena where you can find that actually if we give some restart that expedites the completion process, that accelerates the completion process. Say for example, if we consider some uh, animal is looking for some food foraging problem, so in forest it is moving ran randomly. Now because of the bad weather or the day is over, it is dark, so it is coming back to its home and next day again it's, uh, it uh, um, starts the uh, uh, looking for the food. So in between what happened while this restart happened, that food can also may change its location. So therefore, it is not necessary that if we introduce some uh, re restart or if we stop the search process in between and uh, begins it anew. So it is not necessary that it will delay the completion process. It might actually help also because in between if this uh, food uh, position location changes and next day morning uh, that animal uh, can get that food very quickly. Similarly, if we consider that uh, uh, some uh, uh, finding some optimal sol solution, uh, if we introduce some algorithm and let us consider the solution is here and from uh, this point by uh, stochastically moving, if we go to that wrong direction, so it is very difficult to come back and get that uh, particular uh, solution or correct solution. However, if we put a restart here and start a phrase, then there is a chance that we can uh, reach there. So in this way and similar to that you can find in enzymatic kinetics. In this way, the point is that whenever there is some stochastic search process, you it is not necessary that if you restart in between that it will delay the completion. Sometimes depending upon some particular situation, it can actually accelerate the completion process also. Now how to understand that when it will accelerate that uh, completion process. So let us first uh, consider a simple uh, 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 system where suppose this ball is rolling down uh, with this ramp to here. So I just we just assume is as a linear ramp. So it, there is some drift V and it is coming down. There is no stochasticity, nothing. So in the, this particular case, depending upon that how much length from x equal to zero to l it will uh, travel. So it is very simple that it will have some l over v time scale so that that particle will reach here. Now if we repeat this thing again, again, and again. As this process is deterministic in nature, what you will find that the position over time you will find the same path again and again and it will have that L over uh, V time that will be the mean time also. Now in this particular situation, if we introduce restart, that means what? If particle is here, if we restart it again to its initial position, then definitely that is going to delay the process. So that is going to delay the uh, completion process. So if we have simple drift, deterministic drift, nothing else. And if we restart, uh, what we will find that it will uh, delay the process. Now, we said that uh, in a stochastic search process, it may actually sometimes accelerate. So what is the reason? So here we have not considered the thermal noise. So when the thermal noise is important, if we consider the role of the diffusion, so what will happen? So let us see a pure uh, diffusion situation. So here particle is there and suppose at L distance there is one absorbing boundary and here it can go up to uh, minus of infinity. So it can escape towards uh, the very large value. Then what will happen? So every time if we start stochastically from here, so particle will follow some trajectory and sometimes it will reach. And depending upon that, we will get some time and we will take mean 
and we'll get the mean first passage time. Now what happened? As this uh, uh, left hand side boundary that is open towards minus infinity distance, so some of the trajectory particle will follow when it will go towards very large value of uh, negative distance and it will actually come back to plus L that is the target after infinitely long time. Therefore, those trajectory, number of those trajectory will be less, but those trajectory will make this mean first uh, passage time infinite. So, in principle, if you consider mean time, it will take uh, infinitely uh, long time for completion of the process. Now, in this particular case, if we do the restart, that means what we can do, so for all this trail, so what you can find that if we restart it here, that means we are giving that particular chance to find this target very quickly, once again. Therefore, we can truncate the effect of these long trajectories, you know, so that um, we can get some benefit. And actually, what it has been found that if we introduce restart here, so that uh, makes the for completion time finite. So now, if we just uh, formalize in terms of the calculation, so what uh, we can find, so this uh, observation was uh, first reported by Johans and uh, Satya, Martin and Satya in uh, 2011. Uh, uh, and what they find, if we do the calculation, you will find that indeed it is uh, finite and it has this particular type of expression. And there, if we uh, plot that mean first process time with the restart rate, you will find it follows some minima. So this is, we can consider as optimal restart rate and one can find from this expression and from this minima also, you can find that this goes as d over L square. So this is basically the diffusion time scale, you can see that. So what does it mean? So it means that if we have one boundary at L distance and uh, other side it can go to infinity, so one particle starts to diffuse, so we allow it up to that time at which it may reach to that absorbing boundary. If it appears there, fine, process is over. If not, so then what is the uh, probability? Either it is going there or in between there. So if not, you restart it there. So we'll uh, allow until that point that it diffuses that distance. Otherwise, it's restart. At that particular point, if you restart, we'll get the uh, maximum benefit here. Otherwise, what will happen in the both side, you can find that uh, for r equal to very high, that means if we restart too frequently, definitely the completion process will be over because those short trajectories now, those will also be hampered. So it will uh, make that uh, mean first passage time longer. On the other hand, if we consider the resetting rate tending to zero, in that case, that means we are not giving any restart. So no restart at all, that therefore the effect of those long trajectories are now very more, uh, much more prominent. So that will uh, increase the mean first passage time. So this is the uh, beauty of the simple uh, calculation and uh, phenomena. So now, as in our problem, we have drift and diffusion both, and we have two uh, absorbing boundary. So before that, going to that, we want to see that what will be the effect of drift plus diffusion in presence of one boundary. So now coming back to that previous example, if we consider, so in deterministic situation, L over V was the time scale. Now, uh, or uh, if your drift, uh, pure diff diffusion, we so see that when we equal to zero, this start can uh, enhance the completion process or accelerate the completion process. On the other hand, if there is no uh, diffusion, so then definitely it is going to delay it. Now, if we introduce both, so what we what we did, we uh, find one uh, observable or uh, a quantifier, we can say that, or parameter rather we can say, that gives uh, the sense of both, that drift and diffusion. So this Peclet number, so this is basically the uh, ratio of the rate of uh, advective transport and diffusive transport. So if we consider the Peclet of the system and we uh, do the same uh, uh, first passage problem in presence of both diffusion here and if we introduce div and on top of that the restart. So restart is that we are restarting with a rate at x from any position and we are keeping it back to its initial position here. So if you do that and you ca calculate the survival probability and do some appropriate calculation, so we get some modified uh, expression of mean first passage time like that, where at v equal to zero, you can find that uh, Martin Evans uh, result back uh, with that particular minima. Now if we introduce some drift there towards the boundary, absorbing boundary, you can see that the minima position is going towards the uh, very less value of restart rate. And after certain strength, you can find that 
uh, the optimal register rate is zero. What does it mean? So if drift is very strong, then because of the drift, particle is being absorbed automatically. If we give restart that, then we are hampering. That means there is no such optimal restart rate or optimal restart rate is zero. So that situation arises. So now, so what we did? So we find here basically a signature of some sort of transition that up to which strength of the drift restart will assist or not the completion process. So in terms of the Peclet number, as I mentioned, if we just uh, plot the scaled uh, optimal restart rate, this R start zero is the rest, uh, uh, optimal restart rate with uh, V equal to zero. Then what we will find, you can see when Peclet number is one, exactly at one. So until that point, you can find that process can be expedited by restart, otherwise not. So we find some sort of resetting transition here and uh, we can analyze that, that this uh, R star, how it uh, goes. One second, yeah. So it will be kind of proportional to Peclet number with a negative side. Okay, good. So now coming back to our deep diffusion diffusion uh, uh, making process. So what do we have? We have two things. One uh, e extra here. One is that uh, two absorbing boundary, and we denote it as one uh, right decision, another wrong decision. Other thing is that this V can be in the both side now. So the common thing is that if we put cheese here, we can assume that uh, this is a positive drift. And there might be also, we can also assume a negative drift uh, under a situation. Suppose Tom is keeping some more cheese with him. So basically Tom is uh, uh, trying to trap Jerry. So keeping more cheese. In that uh, case, Jerry will be deceived and uh, he will uh, try to run towards Tom. So that we can consider as a negative drift. So these two differences are there. And now if we set all this uh, parameter here. So what we, uh, are the parameter of interest? So we want to see the what is the accuracy at which this uh, particle will reach to the right decision. Another one there, what is the minimum common uh, mean minimum time it requires to take any decision, right or wrong. So that is decision time and over accuracy we denote it as reward ratio. And now we will try to optimize this reward ratio in presence of stochastic resetting. So I'm coming back to our problem again. So before we go towards a uh, result, one more important thing about the stochastic resetting, we should uh, explain that. Uh, when does this restart helps in terms of completion time? So there is another analysis in terms of the coefficient of variation of the mean first process time. So what does it mean? That when you had uh, the Traject long trajectories are prominent, mean first process time was high, right? Now, if we give restart, so we are truncating them. So basically what we are doing, we are trying to reduce the fluctuations of this uh, first process time. Therefore, and uh, the second point is that if we have a particular uh, uh, strength of drift towards the absorbing boundary, then because of that influence of that drift, the fluctuation of first process time will be less, right? So drift will control. So what uh, Slomi uh, found in uh, 2016 that if we find that this coefficient of variation, that is the uh, fluctuation of her mean, if it is greater than one without resetting, if it is greater than one without resetting, then what you will find that it will definitely help. If we introduce restart, that will definitely help the completion process. That means uh, restart uh, time will reduce. Otherwise, it will not. So taking this information in mind, what we did in our problem, we have not introduced restart. Without restart, we uh, find that uh, mean uh, completion time or mean decision time to any of the boundary and its fluctuation. And uh, as a function of both the drift and the initial position. And what we find that we can uh, introduce this criteria and we find that there is some very non-monotonic way you will find some zone where Restart uh, doesn't help at all, and otherwise, restart can help in reducing the uh, uh, decision time. So, here you can see that this both V and X0 can influence that uh, decision time. Uh, if we, uh, I mean, the fluctuation of decision time and its ratio over mean. So, this is the way we can uh, identify the zone. On the other hand, in our decision making process, other important quantifier is the accuracy. That is, the, what is the probability of this? Uh, particle to be escaped towards the 
positive or correct uh, decision boundary. They are also, if we choose one particular uh, R, so this is R listed rate equal to 1, and if we uh, find the, what is the gain in terms of accuracy and put this criteria, so what we find that what is the positive, positive here. So there is some zone where you will find that restart will increase the accuracy. Of course, that is also function of R. Uh, here we have uh, uh, we have floated with a particular R. So therefore, from this two very plot, you can see that this problem is very uh, 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 non-trivial way. They are connected, and if we want to calculate the accuracy over um, uh, time, that means uh, accuracy speed trade-off. So that we might get some fascinating result. So let us see what happened. So uh, very quickly uh, and briefly what we did actually. So we considered the uh, underlying uh, 1D Fokker plan process with uh, uh, the uh, stochastic resetting. From there, if we can calculate flask and if we go to the uh, um, uh, Laplace space from that up under appropriate condition, we can find out the splitting probability from where yeah, we can find epsilon plus minus from the j plus minus and we can find uh, accuracy, simple. Similarly, if we consider backward Fokker flag and if we consider survival uh, probability q in presence of restart, from there under certain condition we can find the mean decision time also of this problem. Once we have these two, we calculated these two and then we can find the ratio and we try to optimize the same. So what are the expressions? So expressions are a uh, little bit clumsy. So we tried to uh, simplify it, but uh, unfortunately we are not able to. So uh, this will be the mean first versus time, mean decision time expression. This is the accuracy, and from this ratio we can get the accuracy over uh, sorry uh, accuracy over time ratio. Fine. Now what are the results? So let us first consider a situation where both the asymmetry, the spatial asymmetry like x position of x naught and the direction of drift. So these are the two asymmetry which can split the probability from 50-50 to uh, unequal probability, right? So they are aligned. So both of them are uh, working towards taking mo more accurate decision or correct decision, you can see from here. So in that particular case, if we calculate mean decision time, we find that with stochastic restart, of course it will show a minima when that V value, the dipped value is not very high and when it is high, definitely from our previous uh, observation. In this situation also what you will find there is no minima and it will always increase only. So you can find some associated R star also. And for uh, accuracy what you find doesn't matter whatever is the distant rate for a given parameter set but you can find that if we uh, uh, introduce a distant it will increase the accuracy and after a certain time it will go to the maximum saturation in presence of uh, V you can see that. So basically what we can say that the maximum, I mean most accurate, that means 100% accurate result you can reach quickly by introducing stronger restart rate. So these two now if we combine and if we try to find the reward ratio RR, so we scale this reward ratio with reward ratio in absence of resetting and what we find, you see that V equal to 0, that means pure diffusion situation and this ratio you can find that when V is not very high then always we can find uh, it is greater than 1 for a particular registered rate and in fact for a pure uh, diffusion system with this uh, decision making process, uh, no drift, so the gain is maximum, gain in terms of reward ratio, that amplification, amplification of this uh, reward ratio is maximum and that is up to 300 uh, uh, percent, that means 3 times which is pretty high and if you have V that means what? If we uh, give, uh, if already there is some special asymmetry towards correct decision, which actually uh, Dr. Ondopal analyzed that, whatever the gain we have, we can expect, that gain will be maximum. Now, if we introduce uh, some V towards that, we cannot reach to that gain. So, that gain will be less, less and less, and when Peclay will be very high, what you will find that we are not getting any more uh, gain in terms of reward ratio. Okay. So this is the uh, key result. Now, if we consider competitive drift and spatial bias, that means as I was mentioning, suppose the spatial bias is towards correct decision and you have this uh, drift towards negative diffusion. So Tom, you can see here, Tom is sitting with uh, 
some piles of cheeses. Therefore, uh, JD will be confused that, okay, so this is the uh, current uh, path I should go, like that. So in this particular situation, one interesting thing happens and uh, which we are still trying to analyze the uh, time scale, that double turnover in terms of mean decision time one can observe. So this is what physically we understood that this is because of the competition of the two time scale. One is uh, arriving from this length over, uh, 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 not length over V because V is in this direction, this length and diffusion coefficient and another is of course the strength of the V. So these two, so basically uh, that length towards correct decision is less, so it is trying to be finished there. On the other hand, by the time the process is complete, there is some sort of decay pro process. Just like in uh, population dynamics, some death and uh, birth process, so some sort of death process is there like that. So that is trying to uh, forcing him towards the negative direction. Competition of this two time scale is giving us uh, a multi uh, double turnover here in terms of mean decision time and we are still trying to understand the exact location of this uh, uh, minima and maxima. And in terms of the accuracy, we get almost a similar type of proper result there. What we can say that when V is obviously, when uh, V is uh, very uh, uh, strongly negative, so it will take a higher restart rate to reach the absolute accuracy. And that is physically obvious because V is negative means V is trying to uh, uh, push that uh, particle to go towards the negative uh, uh, wrong decision. Now by giving restart, we are stopping that probability of wrong decision. So more frequent restart will increase the probability of the uh, uh, correct decision or right decision. So now if we uh, just take a turnover, so here are two interesting results we find. First is in terms of the amount, so you find that here the gain is even, we can get maximum gain in terms of enhanced reward ratio even more, 400%. You can see here for particular V. And this you can see that starting from pure diffusion, if you increase that negative V up to a certain point of negative V, this enhancement will be there. After that, again, it will reduce. So you will find another turnover here. And that is also, again, obvious when that negative drift is too high. So in that particular case, what we can uh, uh, expect that decision time, the way we define the decision time is the particular unconditional mean first passage time. Particle will be absorbed by any one of this boundary. So that decision time was very low. Now, if we incorporate uh, restart there, decision time will increase and accuracy has some range to be increased, right? So overall, you will find that uh, it will come down for very high value of V. So two non-monotonic behavior, one in this side, another in terms of V also you will find this non-monotonic behavior. So therefore, overall, what we can say that this is a uh, charming or wonderful problem where you can identify under which condition the uh, speed accuracy trade-off will be influenced or amplified a more efficiently in presence of stochastic resetting. And we find that uh, if there is no uh, 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 asymmetry in terms of spatial symmetry or uh, drift, uh, uh, there is no use of resetting to increase that set of problem. On the other hand, uh, if there are asymmetry, then it can actually influence. And when the spatial asymmetry and drift, they are uh, uh, working in opposite way, in that particular situation, interestingly, we can uh, amplify it more efficient. Now, the open issue and um, anybody interested, uh, particularly Dr. Arnopal's group, uh, they can uh, uh, collaborate. So, as I mentioned uh, in, in, in context, right, so we can now uh, uh, extend this idea to this uh, discrete state system where the stochastic resetting will be as the previous speaker was um, uh, telling, so uh, from any particular state, there should be some policy, so like right hand side, left hand side jump, and coming back to the free uh, enjoyment substrate. So introducing some sort of appropriate for policy here, and what is the role of this unbinding process if we uh, explore, so I believe that will be a very interesting problem. And in terms of the physics of the problem, we can forget anything, everything about enzymatic kinetics and all. We can just consider a, a deuce situation in tennis. So where we find that from deuce, uh, player one can win uh, first uh, advantage and then player one can win. Or from advantage, it can come back to deuce again and second player can win successively winning two points. Right, right. So here, 
instead of one advantage, if we introduce suppose multiple advantage, advantage one, advantage two, advantage three, and then one player can win. In that particular case, from any nth advantage, if we put another option that from that advantage state, particle can come back to that deuce directly by some particular like some yes or some uh, uh, point. So that will give us a very beautiful uh, uh, effect of stochastic resetting problem in this type of discrete uh, process. So in general from deuce it is driftless, we can assume that drift equal to zero, but as we know that if it is French open and Rafael Nadal in his best, then from deuce also, so there will be some bias towards Rafael Nadal. So in that way we can introduce some sort of drift there as well. So with this, I would like to uh, thank uh, my uh, collaborator actually from whom I, actually, I, I am actually learning this uh, stochastic resetting problem, uh, of course Arno and uh, Slomi and Somrita, both of them, Arnob and Slo Somrita was visiting Slomi's lab. That time I had an opportunity to visit his lab and for a couple of months and from there we started. And of course my small group at IIT Tirupati. And thank you everybody. Yeah, yeah thank you for a nice talk. Uh, the floor is open for questions. There. Yes. Uh, thank you, very, very nice talk. Um, the, uh, so you, for the stochastic resetting, you you showed this how you modify the Fokker-Plan equation, right? Where you had a, a negative and positive term. I, I, there was something like Q of t that you have introduced. So can you explain what that uh, Q of t is? There? Oh, that is survival probability. Okay. So oh. okay. Uh, going back to that, like here, right? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Um, so okay. uh -huh. Q of t is that uh, it can go to minus infinity. Okay. So at time t minus infinity, this observing boundary. What is the total probability that particles so, survive? Fine. So that means you uh, to to actually model this stochastic resetting, you you add up add these two terms. Uh, but then, as you know, this fokker plan equation has to the solution of this equation will satisfy Chapman Kolmogorov equation, which is a Barker property. But then, if you add these add up terms. Uh, are you still maintaining detail valence? Are you still retaining the Markov property? Uh, have you tested that? Because to me, it looks like you're going to break the detail balance by, by doing this. Is is that uh, a problem? Yeah, so basically you can say that only this part is like uh, coming from the pure fogger plank equation. Yes. And this is like in the way in our master equation jump process, the way we add it. So it is like that. So this this two term is purely out of equilibrium. So at any time t, stochastically with r rate, we are picking the particle from there and, and keeping it back to that initial position. But you're not going to do reverse. You are going to do ever the no, reverse. No, no. Yeah. So that means so, you are breaking yes, the daily yes, yes, So out of means, yeah, so, yeah. No, 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 no. Out of equilibrium is different from breaking a det detail balance. So Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, we are breaking, in that sense, we are break breaking the detail balance, yes. Um, uh, that, that should uh, be a problem, isn't it? I mean, no, a problem in terms of what you were saying? Uh, because it's not a Markov pro pro property anymore, so you're... So if you add these two terms, uh, the solution of this, uh, have, have, have you tested? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, it, isn't, it doesn't look, look, look uh, kind of unphysical to do this then, I mean... If it, because if you if, if you are thinking about having a t is equal to zero jump in that sense you can say what you, maybe I'll talk to you later about this uh, more the, the other question I had what, do we have time or yeah so just one more question it's about uh, the resetting when you do resetting yeah especially with the drift uh, you also talked about drift towards the right uh, direction and drift towards the wrong direction as well suppose if you are doing a uh, drift along the right direction and uh, let's say uh, you have a uh, reset rate. Um, that may be, you know, given by this diffusion time that you mentioned, right? Some optimal diffusion time. Um, so is it is it important to actually do the resetting when you're already traveling in the right direction? Or should you do only resetting when you're traveling the wrong direction? Doesn't that, that doesn't that, uh, shouldn't that be involved in, in decision making? Yeah, so uh, that sense is coming more, uh, is more pronounced when P is pretty high. That means Peckley is high, LV over 2D, that yeah. advective uh, transport right. over diffusive transport, uh, advective transport is dominating over diffusive transport, that time definitely. So when that LV over 2 high, 
automatically it is being completed. So why to disturb that process? Right. So then it will, uh, 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 I mean, uh, slow down the completion right. process. That's why there will be one resetting transition. I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There are too many information. Yeah. Maybe I didn't process it. That's fine. Yeah. So we have to consider here. So as you mentioned correctly, so this is the zone without resetting. So based on the drift and right. the initial bias, you mm -hmm. have some zone where only actually it will have help. Otherwise, it is automatically going with a very uh, uh, confidently it is going towards the correct decision. Then why to disturb it? Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one last question before we pay yeah. for coffee. Uh -huh. So when that drift is uh, towards the right boundary, can you explain what is the physical reason why the accuracy epsilon plus monotonically increases with respect to resetting rate? Yeah, so uh, that you can say that as if drift is not very high, mm -hmm. so on drift is very high, then it is already 100% accuracy. You can see that. So there is no effect of uh, 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 effect in terms of uh, resetting on accuracy because it is 100%. It may happen now. If you give resetting, it will happen a little later, but it will be 100%. But if drift is less, that point also, although it is uh, towards accurate, suppose 80%, 20%, like this, that time also there are, there will be few trajectories which will try to go in the opposite direction, right? Yeah. So by giving a controlled uh, resetting, we can actually truncate those and we can enhance or accelerate the um, possibility or uh, exploring this uh, character. Yeah, for, for and the, this will be true only when drift is Yeah, when yeah. the drift is low, it is understandable, but when from the plot, it seems that any values of the drift, it increases monotonically. So when the drift is very high towards the right boundary, it seems so resetting will only delay the process. Yeah, the drift is very high, you see, always it is 100%. Uh, resetting will delay the process, you understand, but it will not hamper the accuracy. Suppose drift is very high, 100% it will go there, okay. Now if we do reset, it will delay that completion time. But whenever it will get chance, because of the strong dip, it will go that side already. Okay, so that's the idea. So it will not reduce it. So accuracy will be governed by the strong direction of the dip.